Hey everyone, welcome to episode number 109 of the L3 Leadership Podcast. This is our first time doing a video podcast as well as an audio, so I hope you'll enjoy, enjoy the added format. And uh, we're just going to dive right into the lesson. Today I'm going to be talking to you about lessons I've learned from over 100 episodes of the L3 Leadership Podcast. And I can't believe it's been over 100 episodes already. Uh, it's just been a fun journey. And I thought we'd just start out uh, with me just sharing a little bit about the history of the L3 Leadership Podcast and how we came to be. Uh, when I was a teenager, I got mentored by a man named Larry Betancourt. And one thing he would do is he would bring in high-level leaders from all over in the city and all throughout our church and they would share their best leadership content and then he would encourage us hey you should take them out see if they grab coffee with you ask them questions and have them mentor you and so I started doing that and I did it for about eight years and after eight years I started noticing my peers say hey it's really cool that you get to spend time with all these leaders uh, I wish I could and I always tell them well you probably could if you just ask but um, <laughs> they never want to ask but anyway, I saw it as an opportunity. I thought, what if I started recording my conversations with leaders? And the L3 Leadership Podcast uh, was born in that moment. And so I started in 2012 um, just recording uh, my time with leaders, asking leaders the questions that I would normally ask them. And that's turned into multiple episodes per month now. Uh, so every month we bring an interview to you. Uh, we also record our breakfast talks from our live leadership events for L3 Leadership. And then once a month, you also get a personal lesson from me. Uh, in this specific lesson, I just want to share two different things. Uh, the first thing I want to share is some lessons I've learned from actually podcasting. Uh, what have I learned from actually podcasting over 109, or oh, at this point, episodes of the podcast? And then I want to spend the second half of the episode talking to you about leadership lessons that I've learned through, from the leaders that I've interviewed in the first 100 episodes of the podcast. So I hope you'll enjoy this kind of a fun episode for me to look back and really reflect on uh, everything we've done. It's hard for me to really slow down and celebrate, uh, but a lot of people in our L3 community have been saying, hey, you got to celebrate this. you got to enjoy it. So I did take some time uh, to enjoy uh, what has happened. So that being said, let's jump right into this. First, I just want to share with you the lessons I've learned from actually podcasting. Several lessons, and I hope this encourages you. Uh, if you're anyone who wants to get into content uh, production, whether that's blogging, podcasting, um, creating videos, uh, I hope this will encourage you. The first lesson I learned from podcasting is if you want to podcast, or start a blog, write a book, etc., uh, do it, but do it for the right reasons. And uh, this was really hard for me because I think a lot of people stop because they think, well, uh, they don't start their projects because they think, oh, well, what's someone going to think of me? Uh, what if this person judges me? What if I'm not qualified enough? Uh, and again, uh, if you ask 100 people, 100 people have a different opinions on what you do. So it all goes back to your heart. Why do you want to blog? Why do you want to podcast? Why do you want to write a book? And for me, I just wanted to give to others what I had the opportunity to get. You know, it was great that I got to spend time with all of these leaders, and I wanted other people to, to be able to sit in on that. That's why I started the podcast. And um, really, at the end of the day, why I'm doing everything I'm doing today is simply because I want to add value to others. And that's my heart. And are there impure motives that can pop up like, oh, it would be great to make money. It would be great to do this. Sure. But ultimately, you always have to be checking your heart to see if it's right. I love this. Two quotes I want to share with you. Mark Batterson said this about writing. He said, when I'm writing, I'm not just typing on a keyboard. I'm doing what God's called me to do. And I love that. Again, it's a motive issue. And uh, for me, I can't not share content. I can't not podcast. I can't not write blogs. I can't not share quotes. It's just, it's who I am. And I feel called to do it. And I feel like it's something that I need to do on a daily basis. My friend John Stanko, uh, who we've had speak at breakfast, he said this. He said, when you're writing or blogging or podcasting, it's actually an act of servant leadership. When you show up at your keyboard every morning, when you record a podcast to add value to others, it is a form of servant leadership. And so I just want to encourage those of you who, who are holding back because you're afraid of what people will think, just do it. If you have the right motives, if all you want to do is help people, then do it. The rest will take care of itself. The second lesson I learned, and, and really one of the main reasons I do what I do, is you never know who it will help. You never know who's going to listen to the podcast. You never know who's going to come to the breakfast. You never know uh, who's going to read it. I just I love that about podcasting. You can put it out there, and you don't know who's listening or watching. And I just think that's one of the most exciting things ever. And I remember listening to John Maxwell talk uh, about a conversation he had with Zig Ziglar. And he said that they were talking about adding value to people. And Zig Ziglar said, John, I think it's so interesting. When people come up to me, they never tell me, hey, I, I, your, your talk at this event really changed my life. 
He said, what most people say to me is the resources you provide are what changed my life, the books that you put out, the audio programs. So again, that's why I put out content. You never know who it's going to help. And, and yeah, people can come hear me speak and be inspired. But if they have consistent resources that they can go to, um, that's how you're really going to help people. So you never know who it will help. Three, and, and essentially the same thing, but you never know who's listening. There's a video, I'll try to include it in the show notes, uh, by Gary Vaynerchuk. It's called One is, Better, One is Greater Than Zero. And I watch this video all the time. And Gary Vaynerchuk has a huge platform now. And he said, you know, people always wonder, how do I get on Oprah? How do I get on this show or that show? And he said, you know what? Before I was on Oprah, there was 8,000 interviews I did on YouTube that got 10 views. And are you willing to put in an hour of time to get 10 views? And he said, I am. Because uh, here's the thing. He's like, your, your YouTube video could get 83 views, but one of those views might be a producer at CNN. And so you never, you really never know who's listening. I, I've been... Amazed at the people uh, over the 100 episodes who have reached out and said, I listened to your podcast, or hey, I love this episode. Thank you so much for doing this. And it's created some uh, amazing friendships. It's created some amazing mentor opportunities for me. And I just love the fact that you just never know who's listening or reading. Number four, you'd be surprised who you can get a meeting with if you just have the courage to ask. I alluded to this in the beginning, but so many people want to get mentored. It's part of the reason we started off through leadership. They want to have meetings with these high-level leaders, but they just don't know how to get them. And I've also found that high-level leaders want to have meetings with, with our generation, but they just don't know how to get them. So I'm trying to bridge that gap. But the reality is um, just start asking people to meet. Uh, you know, if you look back at the first 15 episodes, all pretty much everyone I meet with is through referrals. And, and just asking. And so I started with the leaders that I knew. Who, who in my life would I love to interview? And I started there. And after every interview, I say, hey, are there any other leaders that you can connect me with? And before you know it, uh, doors just start opening. And one relationship leads to another. And again, I just want to encourage you to have the courage to ask. And, and maybe you don't have a great process for this. I don't have time to teach the process. I have taught it in a past episode. Um, but I actually wrote an ebook called Making the Most of Mentoring. And I give you my step-by-step -step process for getting meetings with leaders, for getting referrals, and for getting mentored and making the most of those relationships. So if you are interested in that, you can go to DougSmithLive.com forward slash mentoring, and you'll be able to download a free copy of my ebook that will literally walk you step-by-step -step on how to get meetings with leaders. I love coffee. Lesson number five from podcasting is you're more like your heroes than you think. You're more like your heroes than you think. Um, when I look at the list of people I've interviewed, especially if, if I would have seen the list of 100 people that I've spent time with when I started, uh, I wouldn't have believed it. Um, I've gotten to spend time with CEOs and uh, just leaders that I never thought I'd spend time with. And I thought initially that had I had time with those people that I would be uh, scared to death, that I'd be shaking, that I wouldn't even be able to talk. Um, but I've come to realize this. They're just people. The people that you look up to, if you got to know them, you would realize they're just people. They have struggles. They have to grow. They have inadequacies. They have insecurities. Just like you. We're all just people. And I think if you can realize that, that you're more like your heroes than you think, it'll really let down some of those walls. Um, I let that hold me back, to be honest with you, too many times on the first 100 episodes. Um, I have people on my bucket list like John Maxwell that I want to get on there. But I'm afraid to ask because... Because they'll obviously say no, or, or what if he actually says yes, what am I going to say to him? I won't be, be able to talk. Um, but the reality is, even if I get to interview John Maxwell one day, John Maxwell is just like me. He's just a person, and uh, he's just trying to help people. And so I think if, uh, I just want to encourage you, get the courage to, to ask mentors out because you're more like them than you think you are. Number six, and this is more on the production value, but I think it'll help. Quality matters, but being perfect doesn't, so launch. What do I mean by that? Quality matters, but being perfect doesn't. So launch. Um, True Cathy said this about Chick-fil-A. He was in a board meeting one time. He said, uh, we must get bit better before we get bigger. We must get better before we get bigger. And I guess one strength I have is I don't wait till things are perfect when I start things. I just want to start things and I know that I'll gradually make them better. Um, and that's how it's been with the podcast. If you listen back to the first, I don't know, 50 episodes, the sound quality was not that great. Uh, not that great at all. Uh, in fact, I remember getting a lot of feedback about how poor the sound quality was. But you know what? I was learning several things when the sound quality was bad. I was learning how to do interviews. I was learning how to edit podcasts. I was learning um, what equipment I would need to make it good. And so I've learned all kinds of things. Um, but the big thing is I wasn't afraid to just start. I didn't have to be perfect. Now, if I could go back and be more strategic about launching and all these things, yes, there's plans out there. I, I probably should have taken a little more time, 
But hey, I've learned it. I haven't learned everything I need to learn it, but I'm, I'm telling you, I just want to encourage you, stop waiting until you know everything you need to know about blogging or podcasting. Just start. I remember when I started L3 Leadership, uh, I didn't have an LLC formed. I didn't ha- have an accounting process uh, up in place and, and all these different things that I was freaking out about. And I remember I was meeting with a friend, my, my friend John Mackey, and he just said, Doug, you're doing the hard part. Like you're, you're putting on events, you're getting people there, you're getting people connected. Like that's the difficult part in leading a business like yours. Uh, once you have all that other stuff in place, it'll take care of itself. And it's been the same thing with um, with podcasting, you know. Now I'm starting to have some of the equipment in place and things, and, and it's in place. But the hard part was getting the interviews, doing the interviews, being confident in the interviews. And uh, just starting instead of being perfect has enabled me to grow in my confidence in those things. And so I just want to encourage you. Whatever's in your heart, start it. Do it. Just launch. Zig Ziglar said this. He said, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to, be, you have to start to be great. And um, just start. Just do it, do it, do it. I can't encourage you enough. Um, the most simplest but best advice in the world, Nike, Nike took it, is just do it. Just do it. Number seven, two more lessons on podcasting. Number seven is consistency eventually starts the compound. Consistency eventually starts to compound. My football coach in high school always said this. He said, day-to-day intensity, week-to-week consistency builds champions. And I think so many times we undervalue the power of consistency because eventually consistency starts to compound. And so I just want to encourage you, you know, you may not see the results in the listenership you want when you start a podcast or when you start a blog, but be consistent. Just bring it every day. Don't worry about the results. If you'll just bring every day your best, and do it week after week after week, I promise you all the results will start to happen and your life and influence the platform and all that stuff will start to compound. But all too often we stop before uh, we can really see that start to compound because so many things come up. Um, One thing that's been really challenging has been the imposter syndrome, right? I can't do a podcast. I can't start a church because I don't have enough experience or I'm not good enough or I'm not smart enough or I don't know enough people. Um, They're all just lies, right? I mean, think about the same could have been said about Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs started Apple in a garage, and people could have said, what is he doing? He's, a, he's an idiot starting a company in his garage, a computer company. Well, he's going to be a bum in no time. And you know what? But he didn't let that hold him back, and now look what Apple is, what it is today. And he wasn't afraid to show up every day and bring his best and do his best. And I love this quote by Rick Warren. It really helps me. He said, when you're small, they will ignore you. When you grow, they'll criticize you. When you succeed, they'll resent you. Keep focused on God. And I love that quote because the reality is when you're small, uh, people are going to criticize you. They're going to ignore you. They're going to say you're not this and you're not that. But then when you start to grow, they'll be like, wow, this is actually something. Then they'll start to criticize you. And then when you succeed, they'll resent you. So again, if God's put something in your heart, I just want to encourage you to do it. Do it daily and do it consistently over time. And God will start to compound that. And I've also learned this. And this has always helped me. The people that criticize you in the beginning, they're also the people that will come and pat you on the back 20 years later when you're doing well. And so uh, don't take critics too seriously. Again, it's always great to get feedback from mentors, but just do what's in your heart to do. And then lastly, uh, what I've learned from podcasting is the power of promotion. The power of promotion I think Donald Trump said this, so I hesitated quoting him just because of everything going on right now. But, uh, but he said, you can have the best product in the world. But if nobody knows about it, it's useless. And I love that quote. You can have the best blog, the best podcast, but if nobody knows about it, it's not really going to do the world any good. So I just want to encourage you to promote. Some people have a problem um, sharing their content on Facebook, uh, etc. Again, if you view it as an act of servant leadership, if you realize that if people read it, it can add value to their life, it'll take away all those fears and insecurities. Um, You know, I I think about, um, I've had several, this happened several times, uh, that friends have come to me, uh, they've come to our L3 leadership events, or they've come, uh, they started listening to the podcast, and they'll, they'll say to me, Doug, I saw you post about your podcast seven or eight times before I actually gave it a listen, and I'm so glad I finally did, or I saw you talk about your breakfast for months, and I finally was able to attend one, and now I, w- I want to join the L3 community. And again, what if they haven't seen me promote the podcast seven times? They may have never got connected. And so I just want to encourage you, don't be afraid to put your stuff out. Again, you, you'll be surprised who listens. You'll be surprised who you can add value to. So just don't be afraid to promote your stuff. Now, promote other stuff too. Don't let that be all you do. But uh, again, don't be afraid of promotion. So I'm going to take a sip of coffee. So those are the lessons I've learned from actually podcasting. 
And now I just want to take a, sh- a few uh, minutes and just share with you lessons I've learned from uh, about leadership from the leaders that I've spent time with and had speak at our events. Again, I'm not the best person in the world to say this was my favorite interview or this was my favorite talk because literally I view, I think everything's valuable. I think everything everyone says is valuable. It's just the way I'm wired. Um, So what I did is I basically said, what were the big themes that I saw over and over and over again in my time with leaders? And uh, that's what I thought I'd share with you. So the first lesson I learned uh, from 100 episodes of spending time with leaders is uh, one, and I guess I don't know how to word this as a lesson, But I just want to talk to you about why we need to listen to leaders and leadership material and read leadership books, etc. Because I was at a breakfast, uh, I think it was two months ago, and a friend came up to me after a breakfast and said, you know, what did you think? He said, you know, it was good, but can I tell you the truth about all these these talks that I listened to? I'm like, yeah. He said, "Uh, they're all common sense. (laughs) He said, they're all common sense. We just got to do it. And, and I love that because the reality is the best way for you to learn leadership is is by doing it. Um, but I do want to talk to you about why it's important to, to get leadership resources in you. Uh, but to, to my friend Chris's point about just doing it, I want to read this excerpt from a graduation speech at Princeton in 1954 uh, by a guy named Ad- Adelai Stevenson. And he said this, he said, What a man kn- knows at 50 that he did not know at 20 is for the most part incommunicable. The laws, the generalizations, the universal truths, the parables, and the old saws, all the observations of, about life, which can be communicated handily in ready verbal packages, are as well known to a man at 20 who has been attentive to a man at 50. He has been told them all, read them all, and he has probably repeated them all before he graduates from college. But here's the key. But he has not lived them all. What he knows at 50 that he did not know at 20 boils down to something like this. The knowledge he acquired with age is not the knowledge of formulas or forms of words, but of people, places, and actions. A knowledge not gained by words, but by touch, sight, sound, victories, failures, sleeplessness, devotion, love. The human experiences and emotions of this earth and oneself and of other men. And perhaps, too, a little faith and a little reverence for things you cannot see. And I've always loved that. And... The bottom line is the only way you're going to learn to be a good leader is by actually leading, by actually having the experience. So if that's, and that is the best way you can learn leadership. It's, it's been proven in studies. But so then why do you need to listen to leadership podcasts? Why do you need to spend time with leaders? Why do you need to do all these things? I believe because more is caught than taught especially young leaders, uh, it's so important that we get around leaders to see how they lead uh, and to catch, you know, when you're young, you should be absorbing everything. When I spend time with leaders, I'm saying, yeah, I would love to do that. I'm going to model that when I'm in a leadership role. Hey, that is something I am never going to do. Um, and you really, I want to catch the values of great leaders. How do they lead? What what do they value in people? How do they treat people? And uh, and again, you just want to catch their character. You want to catch how they lead. Because really what you're doing is you're shaping your vision and you're shaping your values for how you're going to lead to when, for when you step into a leadership role. And so I just want to encourage you, uh, you know, get as much resources as you can into you. Spend the time with as many leaders as you can uh, so you can catch what they have to offer. And I think it will really add a lot of value to your life. The second lesson I learned from uh, the 100 episodes of the podcast, and this is very basic, but leadership matters. Leadership matters. John Maxwell says that everything rises and falls on leadership. And sometimes I'd love for that not to be true, but if you look around, it's true. If you show me a thriving business, I'll show you a thriving leader. If you show me a thriving church, I'll show you a thriving leader. Uh, If you show me a growing family, I'll show you a growing uh, leader. Again, everything rises and falls on leadership. And uh, Bill Hybel said this, he said, everyone wins when a leader gets better. And for me, a basic definition of, of influence is John Maxwell's, um, or of leadership is John Maxwell's leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. And if you have influence over your family, you're a leader in your family. If you have influence over friends, you're a leader of your friends. And so I just want to uh, just, just stress the importance that leadership matters. And if leadership matters, if it really matters, then it's absolutely essential that we become the leaders God called us to be. It's absolutely essential that we grow to our maximum potential because it matters what we do as leaders. Uh, if we want the world to be a better place, ultimately, we have to do it by becoming a better leader. If we want our families to get better, if we want our communities to get better, our cities, our nations, we have to get better as leaders. Leadership matters. The third lesson that I saw over and over and over again is leaders can grow and develop. 
Leaders absolutely can grow and develop, which is why we need leadership resources. Um, you know, there's certainly born leaders who have the born, they're just born leaders. They, ha they have the natural giftedness. Now, they still have to grow and develop. Just because they're naturally gifted doesn't mean that they don't have to grow. But there's also grown leaders. And, and I see the majority of leaders being in, in this box is that they had to grow. They had to read books. They had to connect with mentors. And that's how they shape their leadership. Um, but it's absolutely essential. I didn't meet one leader in the whole 100 episodes that didn't make personal growth a huge part of their life. You can grow and develop as a leader. The fourth lesson I learned is there's many kind of leaders. There's many kind of leaders. I think so many times we pigeonhole ourselves and say, you know, a leader is only someone who's in a quarter office at a high rise downtown or that's leading a company of 600 employees. But the reality is there's all kind of leaders. Uh, Bill Hybels has a great book that I'd recommend called Courageous Leadership. And in it, he has a whole chapter on the kinds of leadership and uh, different kinds of leadership. For me, I'm an encouraging leader. I love to encourage people to go after their dreams and lead people and connect people. That's what I do best. There's other leaders that they're turnaround leaders. They love to go into a company and actually turn it around and fix problems. There's other leaders that are the, the executive type leaders that can lead huge companies and, and do great things. Again, there's all different kinds of leaders, so don't pigeonhole yourself. And if you listen to all the leadership interviews, you'll realize that, that everyone is different in how they lead, what their capacity to lead is, and, uh, and their leadership style. And so don't pigeonhole yourself. There are all kind of type of leaders. Number five, I thought this was pretty interesting. Leaders, leadership is not something leaders are. I'm sorry, do. It's something they are. Leadership is not something leaders do. It's something of who they are. And uh, I thought this was interesting. One question I asked a lot early on in the podcast was, you know, tell me about your leadership journey. When did you first know you were a leader? And a lot of people said, you know, I never thought of it like that. And I still don't even necessarily know if I think of myself as a leader it's just something I do. It's something I am. And yeah, it's something I grow in, but it, it just exudes out of who I am. And I thought that was such a great, uh, a great way to frame it. Instead of just saying, hey, I have to do leadership. No, I am a leader and leadership is what I, what I am. And let that exude out of you. I think that'll make a significant difference. Number six, great leaders live out of their heart. Great leaders live out of their heart, and um, I try not to inter interview any leaders that don't live out of their heart. I don't care how successful people are. If they don't have great hearts, I really I could care less about what they have to offer uh, and say. That's, that's not completely true, but in general, uh, great leaders, the ones that I look up to, are, are ones that lead out of their heart. They love people, and they do things for a purpose. They care about something more than the bottom line. They care about people. They want to add value to people. They want to serve people. Great leaders live to serve. And those are the kind of leaders that I want to follow. Lesson number seven is mentoring matters. Mentoring matters. Craig Rochelle said this. He said, you are one relationship away from changing your destiny. You're one relationship away from changing your destiny. And I did not interview one leader, spend time with one leader that was not, uh, that did not have mentors at some point in their life investing in them and continue to have mentors. And they learn from everybody. Uh, again, uh, I thought it was interesting there's a study done with inner city kids who, who have hard lives, and uh, they did a study on the kids that, that have unfortunate circumstances. What is it about the kids that go out and actually do something great with their lives? What, what enables them to do that versus the kids who just let life circumstances hold them back? And they said the number one factor of kids who get out of those situations are they had someone show them another way. They had some, someone show them another way of life. In other words, they had a mentor come into their life to take them to places they could never go on their own. And over and over and over again, I see in leaders' lives that they had people come in their lives that see things in them that they didn't see in themselves, that gave them opportunities that they would have never had any otherwise, and to help them go further faster. And again, so if, if you don't intentionally pursue mentorship, I can't encourage you to do that enough. Find a mentor who can take you further faster. The eighth thing that I saw over, over, over and over again is the importance of character. Character is absolutely essential as a leader. One of my favorite quotes that came from our leadership interviews was Gerald Brooks. And he said this, he said, character is more caught than taught. And that's why it's so important that you spend time with leaders who are of great character and that you can look up to. Because again, you're going to catch their values. You're going to catch their character. So if you're around leaders who don't have great character, I encourage you to find some other leaders to get around. Uh, but character development is the only development that really matters in the long run. Um, if you don't develop your character, you're never going to make it to your finish line. Um, you're going to lose your family. You're going to lose your, your, I don't know, you're just going to go off the deep end. You need character to sustain you. Um, and something that I always pray in this area um, that I learned from a pastor named Keith Moore, I pray God, Help me develop as quickly and as solidly as possible. 
because I want to develop to my full potential as fast as I can, but I also, I don't want to grow so fast that my, my character can't sustain me. So help me to grow my character so that it can sustain whatever you've called me to do. And I just want to encourage you, focus on your character development. And the best way for you to do that is to get around men and women of character. Number nine, I, I always love asking leaders this question. Um, the lesson I learned is leaders view money as a tool, not something to be pursued. Leaders view money as a tool and not something to be pursued. Um, I always think it's interesting to ask leaders who have a lot of money what they actually think of money. Because I think as young leaders, we think, man, it'd be so great to live in that house or that neighborhood or have that much money or buy the boat or buy the yacht. Um, but what is it actually like when you have it? And I found this over and over again. Uh, T.D. Jake says the best success never feels like success. And uh, when you get all that stuff, when you have the bank account, all, all money is is a tool to do good right? It gives you options. That's all it does for you. It doesn't fulfill you. It doesn't make you feel better. Uh, it gives you options to live in nicer neighborhoods, eat better food, and go better places. That's basically all money will do for you. And the biggest thing it can do is be a blessing to other people. And so I just want to encourage you, don't get so focused on making money. Just focus on your purpose. That came up over and over and over again. If you just focus on your purpose, everything else will take care of itself. Lesson number 10, two more. <laughs> this is fun. Uh, leadership sucks. Leadership sucks. And actually, this is a John Maxwell quote. Uh, he said when before he dies, his last book is going to be called Leadership Sucks. And, and why do I say that? And why did he say that? He said, people who idolize the privileges of leadership often fail to notice the sacrifice involved. People who idolize the privileges of leadership often fail to notice the sacrifice involved. And, you know, we oftentimes see leadership as people speaking at conferences. We see, you know, the book deals and all these different things and the money. And we think that's leadership. Like if I can be a leader, then I'm going to have all those things. But what they don't see is all the sacrifices the leader makes, all the tough decisions the leader have to make, um, letting people go, having enemies, having people hate you. Um, man, it is a tough road. And I'm, I'm on the very, very front end of that. And, uh, you know, I love what John Maxwell shared one time. He, he said a, a young man came up to him uh, in the middle of a conference and said, John, I want to do what you do. And John said, you know, what do you mean you want to do what I do? And he said, John, I want to do what you do. You get to come here, speak in front of a few hundred people. Um, you know, you made a lot of money through it. You get to add value to people. You have fun. I want to do what you do. And John smiled and he said, well, I think it's time here for a lesson. He said, son, I, I understand that you want to do what I do. In fact, I very much understand that. But the question isn't, do you want to do what I do? The question is, do you want to do what I did so you can do what I do? And the reality is we oftentimes see the outcome of years and years of growth and leadership, but we don't see the, the price that came with that. And I think sometimes if we saw the price that came with it, we may even double think whether or not we want to get there. But I just want to encourage you, just realize that, man, half of leadership really does suck. And yeah, there's some great things that come with it, but there's a lot of tough stuff that comes with it. And so um, that's something that I definitely realized. And then lastly, and this is always my favorite question to ask in my interviews, I realized that legacy matters. Um, my favorite, you know, I was in... Um, I was in a leadership cohort uh, with a company called the Pittsburgh Leadership Foundation. And uh, through a series of events, I remember we all got the, to, to give feedback to each other when we were finished with this whole experience. And there was a, a guy that was a CFO of a, a multi-million dollar company, very successful. And I remember looking him in the eye and I said, you know, I won't say his name, but I'll just say, hey, Bob, you know, what do you want your legacy to be? What do you want to be remembered for? And he just started tearing up and he said, you know what I want to be remembered for? I want to be remembered for being a great scout leader. And, and he loved the Boy Scouts and he just wanted to be known as a great scout leader. The CFO of this great, great company, and he could care less about that. He's just saying, I just want to add value to young men and help shape young men's lives. And so very quickly, that became a favorite question of mine to ask in interviews. You know, as successful as some of the people I've interviewed for, what really matters to them? And some of my favorite answers... I'll just read to you. Uh, Greg Peasley, who's an executive at UPMC, said, you know, I don't think too much about my earthly legacy because it really doesn't matter that much. You know, I don't know what my grand great-grandfather did. I don't know what his legacy is. So my whole view on legacy is just, man, I want to make the biggest difference I can while I'm here. I want to invest in my family and then let them create their own legacies. I'm really not that important. And I just thought that the humility that came with that was interesting. John Henney said this, he said, my legacy will be the four boys I raise and what they do. And over and over again, more than anything, family, family is what matters. And that's why 
when we talked about the character development phase, I don't want to get to the end of the journey and not be with my family. I don't want to be so focused on work that I lost my family in it. Because at the end of the day, my legacy really is my kids and what I'm leaving to the next generation. And then Jeff Leake said this, pastor of Allison Park Church. He said, life's not about what you do. It's about what you set into motion. And really, that's why L3 Leadership exists. I don't know what we're setting into motion with all these podcasts, all these connections, all these breakfasts, um, but I know that all kinds of great things are getting set into motion. And it's such an honor to be a part of something bigger than yourself. And so I just want to encourage you to live life outside of yourself. Put things into motion that don't serve you but serve others. And watch what God does in your life. And I think you'll build probably one of the greatest legacies you could ever think about building if you just focus on adding value to others. You know, it's been an absolute pleasure to record over 100 episodes of the podcast, and I'm certainly looking forward to the next 100 and uh, maybe thinking of some more creative ways to, to add value to listeners. Um, but if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, just a few questions to you finish up. One, what have you learned from the podcast? I'd, be, I'd love to hear what you've learned. Um, who are some of your favorite speakers and interviews? What were your favorite lessons um, and episodes? And then how are you different? How is your life different as a result of listening to the L3 Leadership Podcast? Thanks again for listening. Uh, I'll be back in a second with a few announcements if you're listening to this, but um, it's such an honor to come into your lives and add value to you. Thanks for listening, and I hope you have a great day.